Today on The Flush, we scale Colorado's highest peaks in search of America's most challenging upland game birds. Battling blizzards, extreme elevations, and wild critters, this dream bird hunt feels more like a bird hunting nightmare. Can't catch a break. The Flush, presented by Federal Premium Ammunition and Peasants Forever. The state of Colorado has 58 mountain peaks that rise more than 14,000 feet above sea level. Locals refer to these peaks as the 14ers. Summiting 14ers have become a trend for hardcore hikers but rarely do those hikers realize they're climbing through bird country. At elevations above 12,000 feet, trees give way to alpine tundra and white-tailed ptarmigan blend perfectly into this barren landscape. White-tailed ptarmigan, also known as snow quail by some, are the smallest bird in the grouse family. They're native to Alaska, Canada, and the western United States, but they are the only ptarmigan species that live in the lower 48. Like cubbies of quail, white-tailed ptarmigans stick together. To reach these high altitude birds, it takes both physical and mental endurance, not to mention a jacked up truck with a good set of tires. It's late September, our ptarmigan hunting journey begins in southwestern Colorado's San Juan Mountains. After a long, bumpy ride up, we've made it as far as our trucks will take us. Jim Millencipher has hunted ptarmigan for more than 25 years. After hearing his stories, I jumped at the chance to join him on this adventure. Dylan Waller shares Jim's passion to hunt birds in high elevations. It's beautiful and it's rugged. I love it here, yeah. yeah. The high country is my place. <laughs> I just can't grasp this vastness here. The plan will be to move up this valley and then to the left into the smaller valley up high above tree lines. And we're gonna hunt what we can't see right what now. What we can't see right now, although there is a chance to get birds up before that, it's always a chance. What do you think our chances are? Um, close to a, close to 100% oh, of the oh, oh, the do? superstitious what one, superstitious one. Man. Oh my yeah. goodness, Dylan. Crap, let's go home. <laughs> All right, I'll follow you, I guess. All right, let's do it. You wanna find a bird river? The dogs are off. This may be the most beautiful place I ever hunt for a bird but the lack of oxygen makes each step a painful task. It's never an easy hunt because here in Colorado, you have to get to probably 12 or 13,000 feet before you're even at a place that you might find one. So sometimes that involves several miles and several thousand vertical feet of hiking to even get to where you might get a bird up. I've had times where I was so worn out that I wanted to consider stopping before I was even to the point where we had a chance to get into birds. At a slow, steady pace, we find our groove. Dylan, what, what are you specifically looking for as far as cover on the ground? Kind of like a prairie grouse. They like to be able to see, but have their bodies hidden, but they tend to use rock rubble for that instead of vegetation. So you want to be above tree line. They like moist areas where there's a lot of succulent plants and bugs. And then I look for scree and rock rubble above those areas. The first snow of the season fell overnight, which adds a new challenge we didn't expect. Other than maybe Himalayan snowcock in the Ruby Mountains in Nevada, there's no other bird that's as hard as, uh, as the white-tailed ptarmigan. Where's the river? It says she's on point 60 yards this way. What you got, river? I'll be surprised that's a bird, but you never know. Is she pointing or are they pointing each other, Jim? 
Sometimes one dog stops and the other one backs that one and that one sees the one that's backing and they're doing nothing but back each other. <laughs> she moved, I don't think it's anything. False alarm. Got some little furry critters, pika or something running around up here. Come on, Riffs, hunt them up. River, up here, come on. Dylan's two-year-old German short-haired pointer, River, is our big running dog in this pack. She doesn't mind this rocky terrain or the high elevation. River's got a knack for finding birds in hard to reach places and standing firm on point. Good girl, hunt him up. That dog is so awesome. <sighs> Start an avalanche. Ptarmigan aren't considered flighty birds that spook wild. In fact, many hunters call them a dumb bird that hold in their family groups far too long for their own good. They simply live in punishing terrain that limits the distance we can travel and the speed that we can cover it. And that is their saving grace. Oh man. I would guess there's less than 100 or 150 people a year probably hunt ptarmigan in Colorado. Very, very few people. It's easy to see why. I want to work up through here, but then I want to take the trail up into that smaller valley up there. Normally, I would just want to cover this whole slope, but the footing's so slippery right now, it's kind of tough. Yeah. After two hours hiking straight up, we still need to climb higher, much higher. Two hours from here to there, I bet you. I bet you're right. If we find him, we find him. If we don't, there's no driving to the next field. <laughs> Our optimism remains high, but Dylan's 100% prediction now seems risky. And there's a storm brewing on the horizon. The Flush is brought to you by Federal Premium Ammunition, North Dakota Tourism, Waltons, Benelli, and by Nutrisource. This segment of The Flush is brought to you by North Dakota Tourism. Start your journey at NorthDakotaLegendary.com. Thirteen thousand seven hundred and three feet right now. White-tailed ptarmigan live in one of America's most spectacular and punishing landscapes. Funny thing is we work this hard and we're just on the bleeding bottom edge of where you might get into birds. Few hunters can say they've taken a ptarmigan in the lower 48. Now I understand why. Come on, River. Find them. They are native to Colorado. They're native to the Rockies, but the bulk of them live in Colorado. These clouds look ominous, which could very easily change this hunt. It's hard at best. What a spectacular scene. Oh, it's awesome. The snow's making it tough, though. Almost any other hunt, I would prefer to have the snow on the ground, but it definitely makes this one tough. And right now, it's too, it's too slick. Yeah. yeah, it's too treacherous. We hope to find any sign of a bird, a feather, a track, a point, anything. We got ptarmigan tracks. Jim, we got bird tracks. We got tracks right up here. That's extremely fresh. You know, there's two birds. They're moving through here. There's probably a whole covey up here. Looks like it pitched off right there, wouldn't you say? Yeah. What about this one? This one did the same right here. It took off too? Yep. If they flew, <laughs> no. they could be no. on the other side of the valley right there. No. <laughs> I was hoping we had some tracks that we could follow till we got on the birds. I just like, I went to a, just at a high. Low and then a, a low high. Low to a high and, then... and now right back down to a low again. But you know what? There's birds here. Yeah. It is very much highs and lows, but it can just be absolutely challenging to the point to where sometimes it's frustrating. Tracks right here. You have tracks again? Yep. All right, we'll just hunt this all the way down. The tracks are, they come like this, right in here. And we'll just go slow and let the dogs work. There's multiple sets here. Good. There's a whole bunch of tracks right in here. 
all over right here. Oh my gosh, be here. Come on, River. You can see right here, they're digging out, eating this morning, probably. We're not far away. What do you got? Fox tracks coming right through here. Same area the ptarmigan tracks are coming through. We weren't the only ones hunting them this morning. Damn. I know. They were here, man. At this point, it's hard not to feel defeat creeping in. Our plan brought us to the birds, but another hunter beat us to the flush. Now, we have much bigger problems. Yeah, that looks heavy. That looks heavy. Up here, weather can turn dangerous in seconds. Ah, the snow's just frustrating. We have no choice but to hunt our way back down. What do you got, little girl? Are they further down? She thinks there's something. What is it? I'm very suspect with the rock crevasse right there that it's like a marmot or a pika or something. There's tracks down here, but it's like those fox tracks again or something. I think you're on a furry critter, little girl. I don't think it was birds. You get everybody excited for nothing. Come on. Unfortunately, that first wet snow is the worst. It's very steep. It's tough enough when it's dry, but when it's wet, you just, every step you put down, you could end up sliding down. It's not a good place to get hurt. Oh, gosh. Come on, ptarmigan. Show yourself. We simply can't catch a break. Our first day in ptarmigan country ends in wet, snow-covered defeat. The next morning, we begin on the slope of a new mountain and find the same bad luck. Can't catch a break. Part of this experience, I guess. One snow squall after another smacks us right in the face. You gonna retire if we get a ptarmigan today? Yep. This is it? Yep. We catch glimpses of the incredible mountain beauty. But the elusive white-tailed ptarmigan once again remained completely out of sight. What a punishing bird. 100% the weather. Our timing or the weather's timing, however you want to look at it, was unfortunate. It's time for a new plan. The Flush is brought to you by Ruffland Performance Kennels, Big Timber Fasteners, Sage and Breaker, DeWalt, and by Aluma Trailers. Pheasants Forever remains committed to protecting and restoring wildlife habitat. Join Pheasants Forever today and you'll help us to create more habitat, cleaner water, and abundant wildlife. Your $35 will make a difference today that will last forever. I learned long ago that successful hunters aren't afraid to make adjustments. Rather than battle more blizzards on the mountaintop, we made the call to drop a few thousand feet in elevation down into dusky grouse territory, a completely different plan. Her view looks a little different here, guys. Yep. But I still see that peak we just climbed up there. I say we just work up the edge here. Okay. Cooper, this way, hunt them up, let's go. Dusky grouse, once called blue grouse, are the second largest grouse species in North America. They prefer mixed mountain forests and have the odd behavior of migrating up in altitude during harsh winter months. It can be a challenge to find them sometimes because they're often on the move. Fortunately, Dylan and Jim know the habitat that draws them in. This is what they're eating. This is a currant, which is a type of high mountain gooseberry, and they are delicious. If you took a snapshot of this, this is 100% perfect, exact, dusky habitat, like it doesn't get any better. At this point, a dusky grouse would boost morale for our entire team, the dogs included. Needles in a massive haystack. There's river on point to your right. I don't know what she's doing. We may have found our break. They're just sitting in the open. Yeah. Come the dogs. No way. 
had no shot. I'm so out of air. When you talk to people that, especially big game hunters, they talk about seeing the blue grouse and they, you know, they, they, they think they're dumb. Jim hunts duskies behind his three German wire-haired pointers. Jazz the veteran is eight, Ray is three, and Jenna the youngest comes in at two years old. They all hunt close, which Jim prefers in this thick cover. I'm a wire hair guy. It's the only hunting dog I've ever had. The grouse that escaped confirm that we're hunting in the right habitat at the right elevation, but now we're running out of daylight. I don't know what that is, but it's a no. <laughs> I think she's got a porcupine. Come here, Ray. I'm gonna need your help. Ray? That Jenna! One. Yeah, we got that one too. Jenna, it's okay. You think one down? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that face. <laughs> Come here, Ray. Come here. You're okay. Got it. Probably gonna want to stay away from those quill pigs from now on, girls. After two days in the mountains of Colorado, we have yet to put a bird in the bag, but we've come close, and even a limit of grouse won't last nearly as long as the memories that we're making. Plus, we still have one day left. Birds went again. Yeah, so did the porcupine. <laughs> the flush is brought to you by Chief Upland. Wells Lamont Gloves, Superior Pump, Southwire Tools and Equipment, and by Wing It. New day, new place, optimism is high. We're not getting snowed on yet. <laughs> <laughs> Today's the day. You have boats? I do. The same amount that you gave me two days ago. <laughs> I knew this ptarmigan hunt would challenge my body physically, but I couldn't possibly prepare for the mental hurdles we have faced. You gotta want it. On our final day in Colorado, we begin the climb of another new peak in search of the ever elusive white-tailed ptarmigan. It's a love-hate. There's moments that I love everything that's happening and there's times that I'm questioning why am I here. <laughs> I assume we need to get to the top. The top of the ridge. What I like the best about this area given the snowstorms that we've been running into is that the wintering area is directly below the summering area. So hopefully if we don't find birds high we can find them low. You got to be in good shape. You got to be willing to deal with adversity. You got to be willing to deal with weather changes and you gotta love working with the dogs. We've checked all of those boxes and experienced plenty of high altitude drama. At this point, we're looking for one shot at one bird. Hopefully for Jim, this is his ptarmigan hunting swan song. I'm retired, this is it man, this, this is the last hunt. Ooh, we're almost to the top. We're gonna go around that high point that we saw, we're gonna come down and hunt that bench probably all the way down to the bushes. That little bowl right there looks good oh, to me too. It looks good, doesn't it? Yeah. All right, a little more up, up and around. The sheer vastness of this land is both a blessing and a curse. We have the freedom to hunt public land for days, the blessing. We can realistically only cover a small fraction of it, and that is the curse. I don't know exact, but I believe well more than 50% of Colorado is public land. We all own it. So it's amazing to be able to come to a place like this to be able to enjoy the natural resources. This is our drop-in point to hunt those benches that we were pointing out. River, you make that look easy. <laughs> yeah, River doesn't share my fear of heights at all. <laughs> we're going to go slow through here and give the dogs time to work. There could okay. be birds in any of these little nooks or crannies. River's on point. River's on point. Right here. She might be back in the other dogs that are just stopped up here. Yeah, she was back in Cooper. Oh, my heart just about came out of my chest there. <laughs> <laughs> it looks so good. Well, it's like primo 100% ptarmigan yeah. habitat. <laughs> kind of just sit down for a minute and watch the dogs work. I like to do that. It saves a lot of boot leather. It doesn't look like there'd be much up here for the birds. It looks like all rocks, but when you 
look close, you'll find these small greens, just maybe an inch long. And that's what you'll always find their crops full of. So they do make a living right here. Yes. Oh, as rough as that seems. <laughs> I've got a feeling you're close, River. Ptarmigan poop. You find some? Yeah. Are there different stages of a ptarmigan hunter? Like, I don't think there's enough of us to have stages. <laughs> <laughs> Jim's over there, he's this close to retirement stage. He keeps saying that. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> you love them, then you hate them. Well, this has been the single hardest week I've ever had ptarmigan hunting since my first ptarmigan hunt. Truthfully, I've reached the point of ultimate respect. Ptarmigan live in alpine tundra where trees can't even grow and oxygen levels are so low they hurt. Up here, everything wants to eat them and yet they survive. What do you got? The dog said on point and I came over and it was eating a dead ptarmigan. <laughs> Talk about a punch in the guts. No, it looks pretty yeah, fresh. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to say because it's under the snow, but that is a white-tailed ptarmigan. It's the second time we've cut sign and no live birds yet. Well, this may be as close as I ever come to a... Oh, we, we <laughs> I'd say we're getting closer, but we can't get that one. <laughs> I want so badly to write a storybook ending, but this hunt doesn't have one. Instead, we're leaving with hard-earned memories and unexplainable images seared into our brains kind of sights that can only be taken from the summit of mountains far off the beaten path. It's like anything else in life. Anytime you work super hard for something, it's much more rewarding than if it wasn't as hard to attain. And that's part of the allure for sure. And that allure is part of the reason that will bring us back. That's if I can talk Jim out of retirement for a rematch. Hunting white-tailed ptarmigan on top. Colorado's highest peaks.